All right, so picking up where I left off with gene transfer, I want to start talking about conjugation. So conjugation, or bacterial sex, requires direct cell-to-cell -cell contact, okay? This direct cell-to-cell -cell contact comes in the form of a pillus, and it's typically initiated by this pillus. Basically, it's a, it's a protrusion from the donor cell, okay? And the donor cell is called F+, plus, and the recipient cell is called F-. minus. This is just a general um, term, and this is one example. So bacterial conjugation requires the presence of this special transferable plasmid. Um, it usually contains all the genes for making the sex pillus, okay, for sex pillus formation and DNA export. So basically this F-factor plasmid has the, all the necessary genes to produce the sex pillus and also to export the DNA. Um, and basically there's donor cells, okay, there's, there's three types of donor cells. There's three um, types of donor cells. We call the first one F+. Plus. We have another one which is called HFR and one that's called F prime. Okay, so there's three types of donor cells. I'm going to go over the specifics of what each one is and the crosses. Okay, but in general, this conjugation can only occur between um, one that is that has the F factor plasmid, a cell that has the F factor plasmid, and one that doesn't. Okay, so it can't occur between uh, two F plus cells. It can only occur between F plus, F minus, or HFR, F minus, etc. Okay, so basically I want to talk here briefly about the um, F prime factor. So that's what's known as low frequency recombination. And the F factor plasmid contains extra genes, okay? It contains extra bacterial genes specifically. So they transfer these extra genes to their recipient, okay? So to whatever cell is receiving the genetic material, okay, the DNA, it's going to also receive some extra genes from the bacterial cell. Um, HFR cell is called high frequency recombination and basically it, with a high frequency recombination the F factor plasmid is actually integrated so the F factor is integrated into the bacterial chromosome so it's no longer separate so plasmids are usually separate like I said in the case of conjugation here especially or at least in the case of high frequency recombination uh, HFR cells we're talking about the actual um, F factor plas F factor genes that are normally located on the plasmid being actually located in the bacterial chromosome now. So when one of these cells tries to transfer its genetic material, transfer its genes, it actually does so um, by attempting to transfer the entire chromosome. So basically that never really happens, okay? It requires 100 minutes for an E. coli cell to do this, and that's a very long period of time that these, have to, these cells have to remain connected, and it's, it's just, it's far too long. So basically only part usually gets transferred, only part of the genes only get transferred. So, and the, and the genes are actually transferred in order, so since the genes are transferred in order, it can be used to determine the order of the genes on the chromosome, okay? So, you can actually use it as a bit of an um, identification technique as well. So, in moving on with conjugation, getting a little bit more into it, I actually have a diagram here which kind of shows the process. It's very basic, but basically you see the donor and the recipient, okay? And the donor is either F+, plus F prime HFR cell, okay, and here's the effector plasmid, here's the pillus. You have your direct cell to cell contact occurring here, okay, then you got DNA polymerase making new DNA that's being synthesized, being transferred over to the recipient, okay. When, the, when this process is completed, we have the old donor and the new donor, but basically both of these now have the F factor plasmid, and both are now considered in this case, let's say they're F plus, they're both F plus. So this one from being F minus to now being F plus, it now has the F factor plasmid, is now capable of transferring it to another cell that doesn't have the F factor plasmid. And basically that's what I go over here. I go over the conjugation of F factors and the crosses, okay? So the F plus, so the F factor is present on separate plasmid, and that's what you see in this particular diagram, in this example, and that means it's a donor. Um, the F minus, they have no F factor, so they're the recipient. So you can see here, here's the recipient, no F factor, no F factor plasmid. Um, the HFR, or high frequency recombinant, um, the F factor is integrated into the bacterial chromosome, so we don't see that in this particular diagram here, but you can imagine that this plasmid, instead of being here, would be part of this bacterial chromosome there, okay? Um, F prime. So basically the F factor is present on a separate plasmid still, so it's similar to F+, plus, but it also has some bacterial genes associated with it. So it's not just the typical F factor plasmid with only the genes necessary for this, creating the sex pillus and um, transferring the genetic material or transferring the genes. Okay. 
So it has some other bacterial genes associated with it as well. Now the basic idea here is we got the crosses, so the different ways that these things can come together and they basically exchange this, this F factor plasmid. So the first example I have is the F plus F minus, which is kind of your basic, most basic example. And what that creates is two F plus cells. So basically the F minus cell becomes the F plus cell. So whatever, whatever cell didn't have, the recipient didn't have the F factor plasmid, it then has that, it then acquires the F factor plasmid by the end of the process and is able to then transfer it to another cell that doesn't have it. So the same principle. Um, HFR F minus, basically no change occurs. This is sort of like, and the reason I told you before was because it takes a very, very long time for this process to occur. So what ends up happening is you have this HFR crossed with the F minus and you end up with one HFR cell and one F minus cell. So there's no change that occurs. I mean, obviously some, some stuff gets transferred Etc. But it doesn't. The process doesn't ever occurs fully, so they never become fully able to um, then engage in the process of transferring the F, F factor to other um, cells that don't have it. So F prime F minus cell is another cross here. And so we have the F prime F minus, and that produces two F prime cells. So in that case, you do have a change. Okay. Basically, you the the recipients acquire not only the F factor plasma, the F factor plasmid, and the genes associated with that, but they also acquire some additional bacterial genes. So this is kind of the basic overview of conjugation um, in kind of layman's terms and the crosses, kind of some little points you want to remember and take home with you.